Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and this thing's gonna be a disaster because <laughs> uh, this is gonna be really janky, but basically, I'm gonna try walk you through the theory behind all of the modifications I plan to do to the vCore VRM on my on the 1080 Ti that I just res that I resurrected recently. So this is the data sheet for the voltage controller that the 1080 Ti uses. It's a Founders Edition. Um, this is the same controller you would find on a 1080 Founders Edition, 1070 Ti Founders Edition, which technically doesn't have a Founders Edition, but there's a reference PCB for it. It's a 1080 PCB. Uh, there's the 1070 Founders Edition, which is a 1080 PCB as well. So those all use the UP9511. There's 1060s out there that use the UP9511. Um, below that, you don't see the UP9511 very much because there's a UP9509 or 95 something. And that thing is a three or four phase controller. And it's much cheaper because this is an eight phase controller. And if you don't need, you know, more than four phases, why would you pay for the eight phase? Well, uh, I, uh, yeah, more than four phases. Why would you pay for the eight phase control, uh, eight phase capable controller? So this thing is extremely common on sort of 1060s, 1070s, 1080s, 1080 Ti's, um, 1070 Ti's as well. And it is completely analog. There is no... Uh, digital interface on this chip whatsoever, except for the uh, PWM vid uh, voltage control interface, which basically is just a PWM signal that goes from the GPU core to the voltage controller, and based on the duty cycle of that PWM sing signal, you get different output voltage. So... Yeah, this chip is dumb as a brick, which means it's actually very easy to modify for a lot of really cool functions. We're going to be adding, um, I want to, what I want to add to the 1080 Ti is enable, disable load line, disable overcurrent protection, in a, uh, adjustable load line. I want to be able to tweak the load line up and down. Um, what else was there? So load line controls, switching, change the switching frequency, and of course, completely manual voltage control. And I think that pretty much covers it. Load line, load line setting, load line on off. Um, oh yeah, force force the phase uh, force the phase count as well. Uh, I want to do that as well. So those are all of the different modifications that I want to do to this chip. And we'll start with the voltage control because that's the most important one. Like you can get away with all like the the other ones will are like may or may not allow you to clock higher. But if you don't have voltage control, you're not going anywhere. Um, and I am aware that the 1080 Ti's specifically have an extreme overclocking BIOS made available by Asus for them, but um, I'd much rather just have ma full manual control of the voltage controller. And the thing is, if you're not on a 1080 Ti, uh, then you can't use that BIOS, but you might still have this chip, so it just makes sense to just know how to do the, the modification physically anyway. Um, and so, there. Yeah, that. So let's start going through the data sheet. Now, this right here is like you do get you. Well, you do have the pinout, which is useful enough on its own, but more useful than the pinout is the typical application circuit, because this, uh, you know, this is supposed to be an example of how this would be implemented. But generally speaking, what you actually end up on your GPU is going to be based ex almost exactly this. Um, the phase count might be different, which is why they actually have the, the phase count, you know, set as a block. So this, this is basically one phase right here. And we don't need to worry about that because there's nothing we actually need to mess with directly on the phases themselves. Now, um, what can we see around the chip? So this monitors the input voltage. So, you know, it monitors 12 volts. This turns the chip on and off. Uh, then we have a 5 volt uh, input, so this is the actual power supply for the chip. So the UP9511 runs off of 5 volts, which is kind of kind of unique because a lot of other chip, like a lot of other voltage controllers, they run off of 3.3 volts, but this thing is entirely powered by 5 volts, um, which makes it actually kind of more complicated to run on GPUs because a PCIe slot does not provide a 5 volt rail, so you need a dedicated 5 volt power supply built onto the PCB for this thing to work. Um, no idea what that does, but we will get to that. Program, well, more like I don't care what that does. There's going to be a pretty good description, and I already know, like, I've gone through the data sheet before. I don't remember what that does because I don't care. Um, then you get programming one, two, three, four, five. Uh, voltage control circuit right here. PSI, which is um, power saving something. 
it's uh like it's a power saving uh it this controls how many phases you're running uh i'm on so output uh current monitoring total current monitoring program pin six power good ground um voltage control actually so yeah actually the voltage control circuit so this is like voltage control this is feedback and th this and let's see and try to use the janky software this right here um that does your load line and it does your feedback um that's the control loop basically plus uh feedback which is why that pin right there is fb and fbrtn um, and we'll get to how all of that works. Then this right here is the actual voltage control, this group right here. So that's the sort of the main sort of circuits that we'll, well, some of the circuits we'll be looking at um, on here. And we're going to go down lower. And here you get the functional pin description. And why didn't I care about LPC? Low phase count. Yeah, that's why I don't care. <laughs> So you get so if you know if you don't have a handy video or a guy or some kind of guide to tell you what to mod, the functional pin description is a very good friend as you know it explains most of the functionality of all the pins. At least it tells you roughly what they do. It won't necessarily tell you how to implement everything. Um, but th this is very very handy for the volt mod uh, for the voltage control. Uh, stuff. The important uh, pins to remember are VREF, which is a 2 volt LDO. Um, then REF in is just a 2 volt. Basically, that pin just sits at 2 volts. That's all you really need to remember. Then you have REF in, reference input, connect this pin to an external reference voltage. This pin is your output voltage. Whatever voltage you apply to reference input, you get on the... that. That's the voltage the VRM will try to output before load line. So that's basically your VID, um, kind of. Um, that's what, that's kind of what, like, that's one way to think of it. Basically, whatever, like, if you have 1.2 volts on that pin, what you're basically saying is that you're requesting 1.2 volts from the VRM, and then the VRM will also apply a load line to that, so you won't actually get 1.2 volts. Now, scrolling down, we have PWM, so these are the actual PWM outputs for the phases, then we have some mon current monitoring for the phases, the 5 volt power supply, um, I monitor output current monitor that's going to be part of the OCP stuff uh, we don't care about that uh, this is going to be part of the OCP stuff I mean no this is going to be for load line which it says right there um, then we have uh, the feedback pins enable which you pull well doesn't really matter you have the enable pin which depending on like I'm I'd have to actually read this to know if it was high enable or low enable, but it doesn't really matter. Power saving input. This is what we're going to use for uh, an input pin power. Yeah, power saving control signal from the GPU. So that's what you use for setting the phase, how many phases are running all the time. Uh, PWM vid. So that's the vid input pin and reference adjustment, which is the PWM vid output pin. So vid ref ADJ. Um, ref in and vref are all the pins we really need to worry about for the for requesting a voltage from the controller because obviously how it actually outputs it kind of uh is taken like the actual control of that voltage is taken care of by this circuit but if you want to tell the controller to produce 1.2 volts you do it through this one right here now uh, scrolling further down, you have a functional block diagram. So this basically is a top-level overview of how the chip works logically, like how its internal logic works. Then you have the functional descriptions. And this this is a very, very like, th this is what you absolutely need for doing things like the load line configuration, frequency settings, and all of that. So before we get to all of those, let's do the, the voltage control thing first. Um, so we'll zoom in a bit and get the extremely janky software up because uh what is it acrobat doesn't uh support scribbling onto your stuff so this right here is the voltage like this sets your voltage and this pin right here you basically have a pwm signal go into that and then 
that PWM signal um, is converted into an actual, like, so, well, it's not really like a constant voltage, there's ripple on it, but it gets converted into an actual voltage that comes out of, uh, to a roughly DC voltage that comes out of ref ADJ. So that goes like that. And then ref ADJ has this res resistor, at, which connects it to ref in, which is also connected through a resistor to VREF. Then there's all of this stuff. Um, FBRTN basically just goes to ground. Um, that's all, like, it basically goes to ground, because there's ground behind the GPU core, and then just ground in general. So, and, and this is a hook to that, and this is basically just ground. So, you can just consider that a ground. Um, admittedly through a resistor, but we, we don't really need to worry about that part too much. Uh, so, it's hooked to all of this stuff. Now, this stuff is uh, used for... Like, th this is useful for forcing the GPU core to very low voltage. We don't need to worry about this. What we're going to do, if we want to get full manual voltage control, is you're going to desolder this resistor right here. You're going to remove that. And then, because whatever voltage you have at ref in is whatever the voltage it'll actually aim for, you're going to set up a... Uh, well, you might want to remove this resistor as well. Depends on what kind of value potentiometer you have, but you'll basically... Uh, do something that looks like um, this. That goes to... Oops. Man, my drawing is great, isn't it? And that, that goes off to ground. Yay. So... That would give you voltage control. And if you remove ref ADJ, it basically blocks the driver from screwing with your core voltage. So your core voltage is now going to be constant um, all the time. So if you're at idle, you're still going to, like, if, if ref in is at 1.2 volts, which it will be because there's no longer anything able to adjust it, um, you'll just have a constant voltage, which is really, really handy uh, for, for overclocking purposes. So, yeah. That's how you get voltage control. You basically remove a, uh, remove one or two resistors, though. I'd honestly also just try to, like, disconnect this part. Like, you, you can also just disconnect that part as well if you feel like it. Um, it really shouldn't be causing any issues. I don't remember going that far with the 1070 that I had, but basically you do need to remove this one. Absolutely have to remove this one, and then you just need to set up a potentiometer between VREF and REF in. And also, if you don't want to blow up your GPU by accident, you're gonna want to put a resistor between um, VREF and the input of that potentiometer, and the leg of the potentiometer, because if you turn the potentiometer all the way that way, you're gonna have two volts at REF in, and that's gonna send two volts to your GPU core, and that's gonna blow up your GPU core. It's not literally going to blow up. It's going to stop working. It's going to kill it. So you're going to want to put a resistor to limit yourself to like, if you're on liquid nitrogen, you want to limit yourself to like 1.7 uh, volts. So you can calculate what size resistor you have to put there. So that's, that's how you'd rewire that part. Um, now then let's move on to, so that's voltage control. Um, hopefully that made some amount of sense. Now, scrolling through, we want uh, switching frequency, which is actually super simple. Let's do that one because it's really easy. Switching frequency, operating frequency. The phase switching frequency is of the UP9511 is set by an external resistor to programming a six pin and ground. Uh, basically, you know, um, so if, if we scroll up back to the application circuit, um, programming six is right here. Useless freaking software. Um, but yeah, programming six is right here, and this resistor from programming six to ground is, uh, depending on what value that resistor is, you get a different switching frequency. And if you want to max out the switching frequency of the VRM for potentially, in theory, that should give you the best overclocking, it will make the VRM a lot less power efficient, um, and it'll make it run hotter, but it should give you the best, uh, voltage regulation and transient response. So if you max out your switching frequency, for 600 kilohertz, you want to set that, you want to replace that resistor with a 16 kilo ohm resistor. Or if, you know, because it'll probably be a higher value than 16 kilo ohms, you can also just put a resistor in parallel with it that you've calculated, that has the appropriate size to get your overall resistance down to 16 ohms. 
uh, 16 kilo ohms. So that's how you set the switching frequency. Very, very, very simple. So that that's that's a nice one. Very, very simple one to do. Uh, the next one that's kind of simple to do is the phase count, um, which is done through the power saving mode right here. The UP9 provides a power saving feature for platform designers to program platform specific power savings. A power saving configuration, there are three operation modes, full phase mode, auto phase mode, and low phase mode. So low phase count, varying phase count, all of the phase count. We want that one. We want full phase mode. And if we look at this table down here, we can see that operation mode, full phase mode is 1.8 volts, recommended voltage setting at PSI. PSI is a pin on the controller. So basically, we need to get 1.8 volts to PSI, um, which in theory should mean you just have to remove this resistor right here. Um, and that should basically be all you have to do. Um, yeah, remove that, and in theory, at that point, this should sit at 1.8 volts. If it doesn't, you're just going to have to lower the resistance from 1.8 volts to PSI. It is worth noting that... Do they say that you can't hook it up? I think I remember... The... Um... Yeah, so basically we just, uh, you would just uh, max, like max out the voltage, like set the voltage to 1.8 volts on PSI and bam, the voltage controller is going to run as many phases as your GPU has all the time. So that's how we're going to max out the phase count. Next thing, load line. This gets a bit fiddly. So load line has a few different settings for it. The first one is uh, the actual load line slope. So let's do the software thing again. Uh, load line for all intents and purposes is basically you have current here. And then you have voltage. Volts and the setting basically describes this slope right here. Right, so that, that's what you're going to be adjusting. And no load line is flat, so depend regardless of how much current you're pushing, your voltage is always going to be the same. Uh, and the more slope you have, the more V-droop you get as your current increases. Right, And this voltage right here at current equals zero, that would be uh, voltage at ref in. So that would be ref in. Right, so that, that point right there, that would be your ref in voltage. And as your current output increases, your voltage droop increases. So your voltage starts sagging downwards like that. That's what your load line is. And it's done like that to prevent um, voltage, uh, well, to basically smooth out power uh, transient response. So basically, if you're transitioning from like idle to full load, to smooth out that transition and it's also done to smooth out the transition from full load to idle because normally if you just held the voltage flat um, when you go from full load to idle your current draw drops off a cliff and then your voltage spikes because you still have because the entire like all the inductors in the vrm still want to push at like 100 amps and you're suddenly telling them that they're and suddenly the gpu core only wants 10 and so you get a massive voltage spike. So load line is done so that when you get that voltage spike, instead of getting something that, like, instead of getting a graph that looks like this, right? Because that would be with flat. That would be with no V-droop because the voltage is steady. Um, but you get, that's load release and that's load start because the voltage drops. So instead with load line, you get something that looks like this, right? And you don't get that spike there, which may or may not cause issues. That's... That's something I want to experiment with. In theory, um, setting up the load line very specifically on Pascal cards might actually be uh, essential to your overclocking range on liquid nitrogen because these cards have massive... First, like, Pascal has a huge amount of built-in power gating technology, so it does not have a constant current pull under load. It's just... Your current draw is just all over the place, so... Your voltage under load just looks like an absolute horrendous mess. 
um, which is why setting the load line, prop uh, load line properly would be really, really important. The other issue is that Pascal really doesn't like it when your voltage goes too high, as in a lot of cards will straight up just black screen if you set the core voltage too high, and it's not even like, you don't even have to be under load. You could be sitting at desktop at idle, you set the voltage too high and the card blacks out. Um, so, you know, if you did that, so if you're running under load and you get a spike like this, it may not be that it actually did any, like it wouldn't degrade the GPU core because that's really, like that spike lasts a tiny amount of time but it may cause the GPU core to immediately crash when that happens. So fiddling with the load line should be, uh, can, could potentially be like really, really important. Um, so having load line control is something I definitely want. And the way you would get it right here is that the, if we read through this setting right here, voltage control loop, um, FB and EAP negative positive inputs, uh, blah, dee, dah. doesn't matter doesn't matter. What we want is, um, well, basically, RLL is an external resistor for adjusting the load line slope. Therefore, the output voltage will be V out equals VSS, um, I out times RDC times RLL and number, so number of phases times R sum. Uh, all we really care about, because we're not trying to, we're not trying to hit a specific slope, right? If, like, the reason why you need to pay, like, if you're designing a VRM, then this equation is important because the spec might be that you need a what 0 0.5 uh, milio. Okay, that's a two. You need a load line of 0 0.2 milliohms, which might look like this. Right, but we don't really care about setting a specific load line. We just want load line. We just want to be able to move, like swing this up and down. Um, and so, for just swinging that up and down, all we need to focus on is that RLL sets the the slope, right? And more R, like um, the higher the value of RLL, the more slope, the more droop. So basically, uh, RLL goes up and this goes down, right? So if you lower this, you get more. You get closer to flat. So um, how do we deal with that? Well, um, we have this lovely circuit right here. So if we wanted to change the load line, we would basically just put, I, you can just put a potentiometer over RLL or, uh, well, you'd run it as a variable resistor, not as, you wouldn't actually use it as a, like you'd have one, You'd go like, uh, you'd basically have it set up like this and there'd be no connection on the other end. You wouldn't use all three legs of the potentiometer. Um, and you could also flip that around. Like there's really no reason why it would ha have to be this way. So, but you would only be using two legs for that. Uh, you could also, uh, as part of it, you could also just remove the RLL resistor, which you might want to do depending on what the stock resistance of that thing is. Because if it's really, really uh, high resistance and you have a very, very low resistance potentiometer, you're going to end up in a situation where the, well, you're, you're, you're basically, like if, if this stock is 10 kilo ohms and you put in a 1 kilo ohm potentiometer like this, right, then your total resistance is going to be like nine, uh, like 900 ohms or something. It's going to be a little over 900 ohms or around 900 ohms. Um, and basically your, your load line will go from looking like this to being basically flat. So that wouldn't actually give you any amount of, like that wouldn't give you any control over it. So um, yeah, you'd have to, you have to size your potentiometer to be re relative to the stock resistance there. Cause if you put something that's one tenth of the stock resistance, you're going to end up with something like a load line that's flat and no control. Cause even if you max that out, it's going to be still be basically flat. Um, so that's a thing. Also, if you wanted to add V droop for whatever reason, um, you would actually want to replace that resistor completely with a higher value one. So that, that's another thing to consider. So if you wanted more V-droop than what you get at stock, then you would have to replace it. So uh, that's that right there. Um, 
That's the load line control. Now load line enable and disable is done through, give me a second. Up, uh, where was it? Load line. There, load line enable threshold. So, load line enable is uh, basically what you need to know here is that um, as this is I out, so this is car VR, like this is output current, right? Um, so how much current is coming out of the VRM? The 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 way the load line triggers is basically so if you actually looked at like your voltage uh, target graph, it might be like. Basically, you're adjusting where this slope starts. So this might be like 50 amps right there. So, you know, and this is again volts. So that might be at 50A and then that's when your load line starts or actually what it might do is if you looked at your load line, it would actually do something like skip and then then volt, volt, you're, you'd get this big jump in voltage droop right there. But uh, basically, um, if you wanted to turn off your load line, you'd want to move this trigger point as far up the, as, as high current as possible. And if you look at how this part works here, more current means this volt, this value right here is higher. So this voltage that you, because uh, VPROG, um, the UP9511 compares the V in with VPROG5 to enable the load line function. Um, connect each prog 5 pin to v 5 VCC through with a voltage divider to set the load line. Uh, enable threshold and hysteresis. The load line enable threshold and the hysteresis is calculated as this thing right here. We again don't really care that much about specific values. We just kind of care about in which direction this goes. And basically what we can see here is that as current increases, this value increases, right? Th this goes up because we have our current it is multiplied by this thing, which for all intents and purposes, it could be a constant. Uh, this can also be a, just some random constant. And then random, like if we just replace all of those with like two, right? Then that's gonna be two, like it, it, these, these basically don't matter what, what they are. What matters is that as current increases, the, the value of this side increases. So if you want to raise the point, like if you want to move this, um, the trigger point for the, the drew, uh, for the load line upwards, what you're gonna do is you're gonna want to imp increase the voltage at program five and pro uh, programming pin five maxes out at five volts. So basically, uh, which they, do they mention it? I do believe there's a there's a mention somewhere for one pin where it's like you can't just hook it up straight to the straight to the voltage supply. But basically, V program five. If we look at the typical typical application diagram and how it's wired up, you're gonna want to do is, yeah. So program five right here is. Uh, you're gonna want to reduce, like you're, you're gonna want to basically put a resist, either bridge that completely or put a resistor in between, uh, uh, or put a resistor across it. So actually, you could just put a switch across it and uh, turn it on and off. So you, uh, to make it on-offable, you would just you know put a switch, bam, and then you can turn your load line on and off completely because five volts is the maximum setting for that one right there. So. That's that, and I just want to check that the program five pin doesn't have a limit on it. Connect, yeah, voltage divider to enable the load line function. No warning about the setting. Okay, so that one doesn't have a warning. Um, it must have been the PSI pin then that you can't just hook up straight to 1.8.
Okay, so they have a minimum voltage for the PSI pin. So basically, yeah, you wouldn't actually want to pull it all the way up to one point. Like, you don't need to pull it up to 1.8. You can pull it up to, like, 1.6. Um, you just need to get 1.6 volts on that one, and then you get full phase mode all the time. And, oh, right, the last thing I wanted to cover was the... Um, Oh, right. I, that's the one I was so worried about. I'm on. There, current limit. Current monitoring for droop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which, technically, this pin ties in with the load line setting, and it also sets the overcurrent protection. So, I'm on, which you can just search for OCP. Um... Where is it? Total output current protection. The UP9511 provides total of current OCP as shown in figure 11. The sense current ISOM is mirrored internally and fed to the IMON pin. A resistor R IMON is connected from IMON pin to ground. The current flows through the resistor, creating a voltage drop across it. As the load total as the total load current increases, the voltage drop on the IMON uh, the voltage on the IMON pin increases because the drop across the resistor increases. Uh, proportionally, when the IMON pin voltage is greater than VOCP, the OCP will be triggered. The OC, uh, once OCP is triggered, it will be latched. So basically, uh, you need to fully reset the the the, the like you need to fully reset the system for the card's VRM to fire back up again after o overcurrent protection trips. Only a restart can uh, release the latch, as said right there. The UP9511 will turn off both high side and low side MOSFETs of all channels. The total OCP level is changed per actual operating phase number. Yeah, table four shows the relationship with, between total OCP levels and o operating phase number. So, yeah, so operating condition, OCP level is three volts. So basically when pin when uh, the IMON pin voltage hits 3 volts, your OCP triggers if the chip is running in 8-phase mode. If it's running in 6-phase mode, it triggers at 2.7 volts. If it's 6-phase mode, then 2.4 volts. And if I'm not mistaken, there is a note about how you can't put the... Um, right, yeah. The IMON pin has a 0.6 volt offset voltage, which means the IMON voltage increases from 0.6 voltage as load current, uh, from 0.6 volts as load current increases. The resistor R uh, at uh, R IMON, so the resistance from the IMON pin to ground needs to be in the range of 10K to 6K ohms to let the 0.6 volts offset work properly. So basically, if you want to max out the OCP, you want to set it to 60k. That's all you're, you you basically and you have to you'd have to remove that pin and replace it with like a 60k ohm resistor. Um, a 56k would be just fine, really. And then you'd have no overcurrent protection. So then you're free to blow the VRM to pieces if you feel like it. So yeah, that's that's all the modif modifications current uh, covered. Um, I guess I could try, like, draw them onto, quickly draw them onto the actual typical application diagram. And this video is really long, regardless. Okay, so, let's do this. Remove ref ADJ resistor, um, hook up, you know, tensiometer, bam, like that, for, so that gives you voltage control right there. Um, then we have programming six, which we, that was the switching frequency, if I remember correctly. We want to replace that with a 16, we want to pull that to 16 kilo ohms. So, where, so that's R1 and R2, where those, well, basically, um, uh, how do I set this, say this, whatever, you want to set that to... 16k ohms there and uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to mess with your uh, load line so your load line is set by this lovely set of resistors because that goes to the soft start pin um, and uh, less resistance is uh, so basically if you want more droop you have to replace the resistors if you want uh, if you want to change the, if you want less droop, you can put a resistor in, you'd basically put a potentiometer across it. Um, well, 
like so. And that gives you load line control. And, well, load line adjustment. Then we have programming 5, which was... Uh, what was programming 5? I've forgotten. Oh, right, the, the load line enable, which basically you just want to bridge that across. Bam. Sorted. Um, bridge right across that. There, no more... Uh, that would turn off your load line, so that's L, um, that's L, L, off. And then we have PSI, which we basically just want to do, we want to remove that one so that the GPU's driver can't do anything. And then we want to pull, like, put a resistor across there so that this is above 1.4 volts. Um, 1.4 volts plus there and where's I'm on oh and there's the current monitoring there's the current limit we want to X that out and replace with a 60k bam and that's how you basically um completely get full manual volt control of a UP9511. So, yeah. And load line control. So, yeah, those are, those are all the modifications I, I intend to do on the card. I hope this made some amount of sense. There might be some mistakes in this just because, uh, well, I am trying to record it like I am trying to record this and that tends to lead to me not making, like, not doing everything properly and then I make mistakes, but basically that's how I'm, that's, that's the rough description of what I intend to do there. And, uh, yeah, so that's it for the video. Uh, hopefully it made sense. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment or any questions or suggestions down below because I am thinking of doing things like this more in the future because, um, well, a lot, like, just for, for the sake of people knowing how to modify various voltage controllers out there. And um, what else was there? Right, yeah, so suggestions. And if you'd like to support me here with actually, uh, support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a PayPal, a Patreon, and there's t-shirt, well, there's not currently any t-shirts you can buy that I need to get that sorted out. There's a link to all of that down in the description below. And yeah, thanks for watching and goodbye.